Hello everybody. You know, this is the second time I've done it. I apparently just cannot talk today and I'm I'm just I'm just going to go with it. Um yeah, I'm just I'm just going to go with it. Uh, whatever. We're we're going to we're going to wing it. We're going to wing it today. Cuz apparently I cannot speak. This is like attempt number 3. So today there are a few things to talk about. Um one is starting off, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, German Tier 8, the VK4502A heavy tank, uh, with the rework that was done a few weeks ago. But before that, there's something that I do need to cover. Mental health. If you guys find that you are struggling a little bit, find help. Do what you can to be positive as much as you can. Um... As of Saturday, my uh, sister's boyfriend hung himself, and a few weeks ago, um, back in March, March 6th specifically, I lost a friend in a bad accident, and then less than three days later, I had another friend overdose on heroin. So, uh, for me, March, you guys probably remember, I didn't upload a whole lot, and uh, a lot of stuff going on. My grandpa also passed away within the past six months, I can't remember the exact day, but... You know, there, there's a few things I'm missing out and a few things I regret not doing with him. Uh, one of those things is I told him that I was going to take him out to a steakhouse, a nice place to go eat. And I then lost a job and then started to do volunteer work and a ton of other stuff. And yeah, I never had the opportunity to have that bonding experience with my grandpa, someone I looked up to heavily. Because to me, he was an outstanding person. He taught me how to work, take care of myself, and... I lived with him for three years, and my uh, grandma was going through um, fourth-stage breast cancer, and he's uh, he was a truck driver. Still was till the day he uh, died. Honestly, though, he lived a good life, and he left me with a lot of valuable skills that I have now. So really, for me, I guess the best thing I can say is, is just every single day I live, every single day that I go to work and do things, I'll just remember him. Because to me, he was a role model, someone fantastic. But... The number one thing that I can say today is if you guys find yourself in a situation where you're stuck, feeling down, left out, be positive. Call your family. Call a friend. Who knows? Just go to a random convenience store and start talking to somebody and just drop a bomb on them. Who knows? They might have something nice to say. Or do some random act of kindness to make yourself feel good. Just anything you can do to really... Stay positive, especially with what's going on right now with gas prices going up and everything going up and up, up. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys all know exactly what I'm talking about. But other than that, let's go ahead and dive right into this. So for me, I kind of find this tank to be a little bit of a, um, honestly, one of those tanks that with the buff that has been applied to this, I, I'm astounded by it. By the way, the 105 for me is basically my favorite gun in this, even though it has low penetration, 200 and, uh, 244 for the premium rounds. So, starting off with the first turret, they buffed its armor, so basically this got the Tiger 2 buff on the uh, turret for the starting 88mm, they buffed the penetration from 145 to 160, the premium round from 194 to 220, and the accuracy, they bumped it up by 0 .02 dispersion values. And honestly, the 88s on this, they're not bad guns. I'm just not a big fan of using them. And uh, reload, 7.7, 6.8, and then after shot, 4 to 3. I have no idea what they mean by this. Um, a lot of their buffs and reworks that they've been doing, they aren't really too specific on what they mean by this. So I have no idea. But... um. I think the tank is fantastic. I don't even run a gun rammer on it as of right now, just because it has been doing amazing things. So let's go ahead and jump into the first replay here. Um, I'm playing with Blade on this map. He's inside of his King Tiger. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's, I mean, you guys clearly saw the matchmaking. We're not exactly in the greatest possible uh, scenario that we can be in, but we're going to try our best. So, I, I one thing about Blade is... You know, we, we all have this way of thinking. We all like to think that, you know, we need to get into combat. We need to get in the zone and move as quick as we can. 
just to try and deal as much damage as we can. But the thing is, sometimes it's nice to take it slow. There's no point to rush in, there's no point to go crazy or do anything to really try and just you know, squeeze out that little bit of extra damage. The tips and tricks, if you guys want to see more of those, let me know. Um, thing is, my tips and tricks videos, they are long, so there, there is that. Um, I also have replays in the Skoda T56, uh, the Ross Arante, I also have recordings on that. But due to what's been happening the past few days, I've been just struggling doing anything. Honestly, right now it's um, 2 in the morning, and uh, I'm, I'm a little tired. Not physically, just mentally exhausted, and physically exhausted. I had to clean out a bin today, which, that was fun. But, there, there's just a lot. You guys, you take it slow, and I, seriously, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm, I'm super bummed out. I haven't had any time to mourn my uh, friends that passed away. I've just been working nonstop and getting sick and calling in one day and just nothing but anger for me the past couple of uh yeah, past few weeks just been a little bit upset but there's only so much we can really do we can try all we want but we have to try and get through it ourselves you can always look for assistance and it can help usually most of the time it does help but back to the replay with blade he likes to be a little bit of a, a, little, a little bit aggressive so for this match i told him i don't want you to leave this rock. You're going to be sitting here, you're not going to be pulling out, there's no point to play aggressive. You just want to kick back and wait. You know, we don't want to try and peek. The only time we want to peek is whenever, you know, we kind of feel like we have the advantage to be able to peek. So right here, uh, for instance, same for the track, drive full into 705A, and tracking and damaging him for 306. So, like, any extra shots to go into him, I would have had the uh, assist damage on it. Now, right here, I'm telling Blade, don't worry about pulling out, let's just go ahead and uh, just focus on shooting his side here. You know, we're not going to back up, we're not going to fall back, we're going to sit right here. And uh, the 705 kind of overturns a tad bit, and now we have uh, two 105s just absolutely pounding the crap out of his uh, side armor on lower plate. And just a heads up for anyone, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, with the server latency as of recent, um, a lot of those close range shots that you're taking and you notice like they're not hitting where you want them to aim a little bit farther ahead from where you originally want the shell to land because I have noticed that there is about a half second or maybe 0.2 of a second delay in the servers right now uh, with the amount of people who are being active which we actually have a pretty good amount of active players on the game as of right now it's, it's actually a pretty healthy increase so uh, keep that in mind just a little bit more lead to help try and plan your shot a tad bit better. But for Blade, you know, telling him, you know, you don't want to push, let's, there's no reason to go crazy this game. Even though we're absolutely bottom tier in the worst possible matchmaking, our goal right now is just to uh, stay in the front line and not worry about risking anything or trying to sacrifice our hit points. And speaking of which, I can't remember, it's been a minute since this uh, match happened. Oh, there we go. He aimed at the tracks, at the tracks. Okay. Yeah, I should have rewatched these before I decided to do a video on them. Uh, it's just one of those days. But, um, you know, Blade, he, I love playing with the guy. I literally just, some of the other day was all like, why do you play with Blade? And I stopped, said I would not replace him for anyone else in the world because... He's been my buddy for the past seven years. You know, we've been seven or six years. It's been quite some time. We've been playing for a long time. And I, th I might be wrong. It might be five. Five years. I think it's been five years that I've been playing with Blade nonstop. You know, we have our times where we kind of separate for a little bit, but then we always team back up and do things. Currently, he is uh, struggling on Elden Ring, and it's hilarious. So there, there is that. Now... You know, knowing when to be aggressive inside these matches as well. So like, up against the E4, I had no fear to pull out up against him because I'm I'm full health. I'm a tier eight. Uh, yes, I'm a tier eight. I'm in a bad matchup. The thing is, I have hit points that some of my tier tens don't have. So I'm willing to pull out and take a shot for those guys so they don't have to. Which in return keeps their health high and allows them to be a little bit more aggressive inside the match. 
but me, you know, I'm half health now. I'm a one shot. But it is what it is. It's fun. It's fantastic. Um, also, with being in the worst possible lineup as well, 3,481 damage dealt, 1,754 assisted, and more than likely it's going to be a mastery badge. Now, this tank for me, I have found that in the entire line leading up to the Panzer 7, this tank is a gem. It is worth keeping your hands on and not dropping it, just because of the fact that it feels good. It's got mobility. It's got armor. You know, its mobility is not the greatest at 38 top speed, but the one thing that this tank does do well is it just, it's got power to weight to back it up. So your power to weight on this tank uh, standard without buffing it or anything else is 14.74. So almost 15 power to weight on a heavy tank. So that's medium tank category, which, you know, it's kind of a heavier medium but with all that extra power to weight, you're able to get in, move quickly, not have an issue, and just be aggressive. Um, both these matches were played on the same day as well. I do believe they were within uh, five matches of one another. But these were probably the best picks that I had for this tank out of the uh, 20 or so matches that I've put into it in the uh, past two weeks. Um, this week, I played on the 20th. And then I didn't play until the 26th, so I did take a little bit of a break and st stepped away from the game to handle some things that are going on around and, uh, you know, just get, gain my bearings back and be able to stand and hold as much as I can. But with the way that this tank is put together, I guess one of the biggest reasons why I like this tank so much is because of uh, the Kree of Etz 1. Uh, the armor model on this is pretty much identical, but it's German, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it stands out a lot more, and that might be what it is. I, this actually might have been um, the same day as the season pass releasing, with the uh, Lioness coming out, that uh, tier 7. Uh, honestly, it was a little disappointing seeing that tier 7, just because they kind of, uh, it felt a little lazy how they did that one, because the Czechoslovakians, you know, it's like whenever I think of the Czech. Chesovakian heavy tanks, I think double shot, not three shot autoloader, you know, so rather than giving it its own individual double shot, it ended up with uh, something a little bit lackluster compared to the uh, rest of the line, so it was a little bit sad to see that, but it is what it is, but the VK-45 O2A, um, this tank, the way that it's front mounted and has everything put together, it is a lot more versatile compared to just a regular Tiger II, but it, it is a little bit sad to see that with the uh, rework that came in for this tank, that they did not do anything about the penetration with its 200 standard and 244 premium. If they would have bumped that premium pin up to, let's say, like 265, 207, 270 with the APCR, I think that would have been a really nice buff on this tank. But honestly, with the mobility and what this thing is capable of, and with the accuracy of the gun, maybe the penetration might have been a uh, bad play in all honesty, just because this thing feels absolutely amazing. Uh, there is a little bit of a downside, however, with the VK4502A. Um, if you take a look at the uh, the tracks, uh, underneath the tracks, that entire under section is only 20 millimeters of armor. So if you are not angling correctly, or someone is aiming at your tracks as you're driving over, uh, they can essentially overmatch you non-stop on that lower part of the armor just because of how it's put together but trade-off is you are fast and you do have quite the amount of upper hull armor along with the uh, newly buffed turret armor the 245 and the 100 millimeters on the side of the turret so primarily it's not like the tank is lacking in, in anywhere it's actually doing fantastic i lied it's actually 120 side armor and 140 on the uh, tracks inside so yeah it's actually 120 rather than 100 that is really nice to see. Had to uh, double check that. Okay, nice to see. Tiger 2 is the same way. Okay. But with this, you know, so far it's 6 to 9 on the uh, match here. Slowly falling apart a tad bit. But as long as we try and hold the center, we should be fine. Because this right here is actually a really good brawling spot. There's no point to fall back to try and uh, reset cap or anything else. Just because it's 6 to 8. You know, we don't want to... If you start to separate a little bit too early, rather than communicating with the team and where you want to go, uh, you will find yourself in a lot of trouble. Uh, more than likely, I will try and get a stream out tomorrow as well, early in the morning. 
So a few hours after this, well, not a few hours, maybe like 10 or so hours after this uploads, maybe 11 hours after this uploads. Uh, trying to get a stream in about the new update and the things that I'm enjoying about the new update. Just because there, there are a lot of things that have changed and been implemented in the game that I think is fantastic. However, I am absolutely broke on gold. Literally at zero. <laughs> and, uh, I'm gonna be buying my new CPU tomorrow as well, so I'm, uh, you know, yeah, a little bit struggling. But communicating with Blade in this map, Blade is taking care of the back section and taking a look. We have the, uh, someone taking on the IC 130, Patriot taking out Blade, but Blade did take down a tank right before he got taken down as well. Right there, talking about the 20 millimeters of armor, that is what I'm talking about. You just don't have enough armor to be able to, uh, handle 75 millimeters, because 75 millimeters, 75 millimeters can overmatch the 20 millimeter plate down there. Um, right here, I kind of wanted to time it, you know, loading in the high explosive, stopping right at this corner, and seeing that the artillery is playing a little bit aggressive here. There we go, 400 with our 320 standard. We actually roll uh, 400 on the dot to take down the artillery, loading a high explosive, which they do 420. So the chance to kill him was about, it was, uh, I guess you could say 50-50, or maybe 55-45. Um, a little bit higher than 50-50, just because that would have been a little bit of a low roll at 400. But high explosives, they're, they're kind of known to hit their average a lot of the time. Um, down to a 1 versus 4 to 1 versus 3, this is something that, you know, a lot of people are going to hit the panics. Which for me, this is one of those moments where I just chit-chat with Blade, and Blade's telling me to play it as best as I can. There we go. Snapping a shell into the T-42, um, not even paying attention to what tanks are on the field currently, just trying to lock down and think ahead as much as I can. Uh, counting the seconds as well on the amount of time that my sixth sense is up because I do not want the enemy team to know where I'm going. I want to be able to uh, pull around a corner and just not have much of an issue. I do think I did take a peek on the uh, scoreboard to check and see what was on the uh, team or trying to remember what the Patriot was at and then loading a standard round knowing that I can go through his armor with the standard. And since we bounced the standard, I don't want to risk a second shot, so I'm immediately loading in the premium shell. And, uh, boom, right into the lower plate. And right here, feeling a lot more comfortable, but I do not remember what the last tank was. And I just... Oh, yeah. I stopped and just aimed. <laughs> I remember this one. But, so far, the VK4502A, with the most recent rework, I find that this tank is definitely back in the meta. And it's feeling like a really good tank and something that, you know, a lot of people diss on this thing. And it's sad to hear that. I actually talked to a couple of random people uh, last week about this tank, asking them what their opinion is about it and everything else. And they just outright stopped and said that the tank isn't even worth the time to grind. Or it's better just to try and free XP pass this tank. But honestly, this is going to be one of those tanks that I actually bought permanent camo for and I'm going to be keeping inside my garage just because of how good this tank actually felt. So, for me, I'm going to hold on to it as long as I can. But first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment that I'm running on this. We're running advanced... No! Okay, why is it not changing? I like that. I don't like that. You can hover on the top and it doesn't tell you. Okay, so something did change. Uh, view range, we're running advanced optics, improved ventilation. We are not running advanced loader. I am running gun stabilizer instead to be able to bolster up that accuracy just a tad bit more, giving me a 0.27. This gun is highly responsive, along with a 2.0 aim time as well. So for me, the tank has been performing fantastic. Jumping over, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, crew skills as well that was used inside those matches. This is uh, my primary super heavy crew. Uh, not the mouse crew, but more like the E100, the E75. But E75 also takes my um, E50 uh, crew as well, which is a little bit more faster paced faster reaction time but rapid aim six cents rapid reloading born leader clutch braking off-road driving situational awareness track mechanic and controlled impact um track mechanic by the way guys i recommend to take this on every single tank it doesn't matter what it is unless it's a willed tank a little bit sad to see that they added a um willed tank perk making one crew completely useless to use in any other tank it's just 
boggles my brain that they would do that. But uh, it, it is what it is. Um, final thing to kind of hit up a tad bit. Uh, this is actually a shout out, more like a not really much of a shout out, but kind of just a warning to everyone. Um, I watched the um, community manager stream for about two hours this morning whenever I got up and he was having a stream go on and talking about a couple of CCs and everything else. And uh, there was a few things that he said. They may not have been directed at anybody or anything that just irritated me. Um, one of them was he essentially threatened to ban somebody off stream from the official World of Tanks stream um, just because they were like, uh, I want to I wanna get the tank. Uh, the Skoda T-56 that just barely got released. And, you know, he's like, um, yeah, you know, and he, he kind of just had a really... Uh, I, I don't swear often on the channel. I'm going to do it. Smart-ass reply. You know, he's all like, you know, just a smart-ass reply to this um, essentially 14, 15-year-old kid that's just saying, you know, how do I enter? Or um, I want to try and win it or whatever. And then a second one was um, how do I enter to win? And then he just kind of got irritated at the question. Um, for me, if you're going to be a community manager for a game or a liaison to begin with for anything that you are doing, you need to have a set tolerance for what you're doing and just accept it or just completely ignore it, period. Rather than stopping and be like, oh, we can give you a ban instead. Because um, to me, the World of Tanks console um, Twitch stream, I never commented there to begin with, but I do watch quite a bit. I, I find that, you know, that is a place of information that I go to once a week, once every single two weeks, to get information about the game and things that are going on. And threatening to permanently ban somebody is just immature and unneeded. If you don't want to deal with them, talk to your moderators and just be like, hey, time them out. That's it. That's all you got to do rather than announcing on stream to 200 plus people, you know, making yourself look like an ass. That's kind of how I saw it. Um, other than that, you guys, um, I'm going to get some sleep, some rest. It's kind of nice to be able to talk about that at the start of the uh, video. So thank you for um, sitting through all of this. And keep in mind the VK4502A, this, in my opinion, is an absolutely phenomenal tank. And I am looking to... Uh, get back in the game and three mark this tank and uh get back on track with everything else and i know i've been slacking off i know that last week was the big update but a lot of things have been happening so other than that dude i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will catch everyone later uh see you on the battlefield hopefully i'm there and not playing mass effect so yeah i'm gonna get going you guys have a good night day afternoon whatever time it is for you and i will see you on the battlefield i've said that twice Bounce.